Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man who's coming off a successful title defense of his King of the Cage bantamweight title. It is Johnny Munoz, who's now 10-0 in his career. Eight of his 10's wins have come by stoppage. I was actually on your website kind of learning about your story. Um, you know, starts off pretty much as an infant. Uh, you know, your, your father getting you in, into BJJ and, uh, you tell a story about how y- y- they didn't let you quit. Um, have you ever thought about if they did let you quit where you would be right now? Oh, shoot. My bad. The camera keeps falling. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I always think about that. Uh, if I were to quit, what I'd be doing right now, if I wasn't doing mixed martial arts, uh, I wouldn't say I'd probably be on a bad road, but uh, I don't know. I feel like maybe I'd probably go to college out of state, that kind of stuff. I love to travel. Uh, but honestly, I think I, I'd probably be an angry dude if I was in training, man. Like, this really keeps me sane and uh, just really keeps me at peace because, like, when I'm not training, like, uh, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a humble, peaceful dude, but I just, I just go crazy, man. Like, there's, there's nothing better than punching other people in the face. So, yeah, I, I think I'd go crazy. And speaking of schooling, you note about the schooling and, and going to school and, and working on your master's degree, that uh, trying to get that by, by next year. Um, are any of your fellow students surprised to find out that you're a professional mixed martial arts fighter? Yeah, they uh they actually trip out now. They're like, oh, what is that? Is that like UFC and all that? I'm like, well, yeah, you know, sort of. But uh, it's like, you know, MMA, there's different organizations and all that. But uh, yeah, they trip out. They're always like, uh, oh, like, well, look at my program. There's a lot of girls. Uh, I'm in uh, public health. So like grad school is usually at night. So when we leave, it's like dark outside in the parking lot. They're always like, oh, can you walk me in the car? You know, you can, you can protect us. I'm like, nah, I don't work for free, you know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they uh, they they seem to like it. They ask me questions. They always ask about my ears and stuff. Uh, so it's it's cool, man. And, and of course, I mentioned everything's going well. You're coming off a rear naked choke submission win. I mean, let, let's talk about that last win uh, against Ian King, second round submission. Um, how did the fight go? In and how you was it? Did you kind of envision all of it? How it went down, or maybe there did Ian offer you some surprises? Uh, it, for the most part, I think the fight played out. Uh, as I had planned, obviously I was uh, predicting a first round finish and then the second round, and uh, uh, I predicted a knockout as well, but it ended up in a rear naked choke. But uh, Ian, you know, Ian was a game fighter, uh, very game. You know, he came to fight. So uh, the first round, it was just we we're striking the whole round, and uh, I had hit him with good shots. You know, hit him with a few knees, uh, punches, overhand, a left hook. Uh, had him dazed, al- almost knocked him out a few times. Uh, you know, his face was pretty busted. Uh, so we were, just stri- we were just striking it out. Uh, he hit me probably with one good shot, I'd say, towards the end of the round. But, you know, I was good. I felt like I dominated the first round. Uh, you know, the second round, my nose was just, like, bleeding, actually, when he hit me with that shot. Uh, so it was just pouring blood, pouring blood. The doctor, uh, I don't think they did a good job of stopping the blood. So I was like, man, so it was just pouring blood. And then uh, so we go start the second round. Uh, I hit him with the one-two. And then he clinched on me, and then so we decided we clinched, and then I just threw him over, and then uh, you know got on top, mounted him, and then my blow was just pouring all over his face, uh, and then you know from there he gave me his back, and then you know that was a wrap, it put him put him out. So but uh, you know hats off to Ian King, uh, he's a good fighter. So you mentioned about you know you were looking for the knockout going into the fight. Was it a fight where you wanted to showcase your hands? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people underestimate my striking. I think they, you know, I'm known for my jujitsu, you know, that's where I started off as, you know, everyone knows me for that. And so I haven't really showed much striking in my fights. So I felt with this fight, I wanted to do that, uh, especially after my last fight, you know, I just, we're on the feet more. So, you know, this fight I was like, you know, I'm just going to strike more. Uh, and a lot of my previous fights, uh, a lot of guys, you know, I'd slip a punch, take them down, whatever. Uh, but this fight, I felt like, uh, you know, he was going to keep it on the feet. So I was like, okay, this is, he wants to strike. I'll strike too. So it was one of those where I was able to showcase my strike. And so it, it was pretty cool. And, of course, you're now 10-0. And, and obviously people are going to look at that record and say the, the big opportunity has got to be coming. Is that kind of the mindset at this point of, okay, I've done, you know, what I can do here on the regional scene. I'm looking for that big opportunity. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, 
I want I want to be in the UFC, so uh, that's where I want to be. I feel like uh, where I'm at now. I feel like that's the kind of that's the organization that I should be in. You know, as a fighter, uh, you know, every fighter's dreams to to be there. You know, uh, there's a lot of opportunities there. Uh, you know, obviously pay scale goes up, and uh, you get more eyes on you. So when there's more eyes on you, that's just more revenue, more money, and then you know. You just, your dreams come true, man. So, like, I've always wanted to be in the UFC since I was a young kid, like, at eight. I started training at five, but, like, since I was, like, eight, about eight years old, I was like, I want to be in the UFC one day. And I'm so close, so, uh, yeah, it should be any time now, so. I, I know in your site you talked about uh, one of your first memories of MMA is watching Rampage Jackson with his slam. Um, yeah. is, is that kind of like a bucket list for you? Like, you want to slam somebody like that in, in, inside competition? Yeah, it would be awesome to get a slam, man. Just pick him up, slam him, finish the fight that way. Uh, yeah, I, I always used to watch Rampage do that. I was like, that's so cool. And I remember as a, uh, a kid doing jiu-jitsu, uh, I used to like pick people up, you know, double leg them. Obviously, you can't slam in sport jiu-jitsu, but I set them down. But I've always like, you know, pick them up, put them down. And uh, that was a homage to Rampage. So, yeah, it would be cool to get a slam KO. Combat jiu-jitsu has, has kind of, you know, you're hearing more and more about it. Is that something that uh, you, you, you want to take part in at some point? Mm, I don't know. You know, it's cool to watch, but uh, I feel like, I don't know, I, I joke around. Like, I respect everybody that does it and everything. Obviously, it's still combat, but I always look at combat jiu-jitsu as, you know, the, the jiu-jitsu guys that, that can't do MMA, so they do that in between. <laughs> So, but no, I, I mean, I respect those guys, but I feel for me, like, I the, the slaps would get annoying. I just want to punch uh -huh. someone, you know, just for kick them or something. When you're training jujitsu, gi or no gi? Uh, I, I train both, but, you know, obviously with the MMA, I'm doing a lot more no gi. Uh, I prefer no gi now. I used to like both of them, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and obviously, is is the mindset right now of, you know what, I got to be ready just in case a short notice opportunity comes. You know, just constantly just grinding away, making sure your weight's good. Is that kind of the mindset now? Yeah, but for me, like, I'm always training, man. So I'm not like one of these other fighters that, you know, after – they only train when they have a fight. So, like, you know, they get a call, manager calls them, hey, we got you a fight. Uh, and then they start training, like, whatever, two months, one month out for their camp. After their fight, they disappear. Uh, for me, like, I'm training every day, all the time. So I love training. Um, it's my motivation. Like when I win, that's my motivation. Like, I, I love the feeling of winning. I love the, uh, I love how my record looks. So my motivation is I got to train my ass off every day. Cause if I don't, that other guy across the cage is going to rip my head off and he could do some, uh, hurtful things to me. So I'm always training. I'm always ready. So it doesn't matter when you're not training. What, what do you like to do for fun? Eat, eat, man. Oh man. I love to eat just whatever. I was thinking about getting that Popeye's chicken sandwich, but uh, I don't know. I seen something on Instagram where the, the chicken looked all weird, like there was salmonella in it. So I was like, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> but, yeah, I like to, I, 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 give me a Chick Fil A sandwich, man. I can order right on the app. But, you know, that's that's my style. Yeah, I got to try it out. The couple people told me maybe I'll, I, I should do that, so I'll probably do that. But yeah, I like to eat and travel. You know, I like to be outdoors. Those are the things I like to do outside of fighting. Have a favorite place to uh, travel to? Uh, I would probably say I want to travel all Latin America. You know, I'm okay. Mexican. I speak I speak Spanish. Uh, that would be one of my, my goals. That, that's actually one of my goals because uh, I feel like you know, whatever you're doing in life, you know, you have a dream, a passion for something, you should always give back. Mm -hmm. So I feel for me, uh, I want to go to Latin America, not only to see the place, but also to give back. And what I mean by give back, I like to help, uh, and, you know, you know, kids out, maybe, you know, motivate them mm -hmm. or if they're, if they're into, get them into martial arts, I feel martial arts changes could change your life. And, uh, also like, you know, spread grappling all over Latin America. Cause you know, Latins are known for like, you know, a lot of heart, you know, warriors, mm -hmm. they just stay in the pocket and throw, but, uh, when they get taken down, their ground game is not the strongest part of their, uh, MMA, MMA game. Uh, they're getting better, but I would, I feel like, uh, that'd be one way I could give back to seminars all over like Mexico wherever uh all over and just spread my knowledge of uh jujitsu to all those people and maybe it'll, it'll help them out so of course look forward to seeing when that next fight may take place johnny man i really appreciate time of course let me know anything follow you out on social media anybody else you want to shout out for is yours man yeah so you guys want to follow me uh, i'm on social media at kid kavimbo 
That's K I D K V E M B O. Uh, I'd appreciate you guys' support. I want to shout out all my sponsors, my coaches. Uh, this wouldn't be possible without you guys. I'm also selling t shirts right here. It's a pretty sick shirt. So if you want to join the movement, let me know. Send me a message on social media and we'll get you one.